Right, hello. In this video, I'm in Birmingham and I want to talk to you about descriptive and prescriptive approaches to language. So let's get started. There are descriptive and prescriptive approaches to grammar. Now, what do they mean? To prescribe something means to sort of force something, to make you do something. To describe something, on the other hand, means you just explain what is there. And that's what these two are doing. So, prescriptive approaches to language, to grammar. That's probably what you met at school. And that's probably also what you meet when you learn a foreign language. Very often that's the case. So, you learn a grammatical rule. You use the past tense in this particular environment. Now, when you apply that rule and when you get it wrong, somebody will tell you, oh, you got that wrong. You, you know, this is what you have to do in order to get it right. Now, that is prescriptive. What else is prescriptive? Well, look at Facebook. You find a lot of misspellings and ways in which people use language quite creatively at times. And there will always be this person who goes, oh, but there and there are really not written like that. They're written quite differently. Or, oops, you forgot your apostrophe here in it's. There are lots of those examples. And prescriptive grammarians, prescriptive linguists would come in there and say, well, this is wrong. And, you know, in order to do it right, you have to do it in a certain way. The other side of the coin is descriptive grammar or descriptive linguistics. And remember, descriptive means you describe, you explain, you, you, you see what's used around you and then you describe what's going on. Now, descriptive linguists don't really care that much uh, as to whether the rules are taken care of or not and whether they're adhered to or not. But rather, descriptive linguists look at the way language is used. So, when a speaker uses words like there and there and gets them wrong, we try to describe what is going on and we try to also find an explanation for why that is going wrong. And in the case of there and there and it's and it's, there are very clear explanations. Those words are homophones. They sound the same, but they are spelled slightly differently. And that confuses people, okay? They don't necessarily reflect on their grammatical use and on their different uses. So uh, that is one of the reasons why people get these wrong. Now, descriptive linguistics also looks at other sort of innovations in language. And we've got them all around us. We've got them in English as well. One of those innovations that has made its way into English in recent decades is the word like. Not the word like as such as in I like cake or similar, but rather the word like used as a discourse marker or quotation marker. I was like, yeah, I really enjoy that. In that case, like indicates that what follows is a direct quotation of what I'd said earlier. So like, in a way, acts as yeah, inverted commas start here, an indicator of I'm going to quote something that I or somebody else has said. He was like, yeah, nah, whatever. <laughs> okay, my second example. And, uh, and then, like, it was really nice. In that case, like is used as um, a hesitation marker. It appears in a place of um or other hesitation markers that we've got. We could also just use a pause. We could pause in speaking. Or we could use the word like. And then like. Or we could even expand it a bit, like... <laughs> there are lots of different ways in which this word can be used. And actually these two functions, the quotation marker and the hesitation marker, are just two out of quite a few discourse marker uh, uses of the word like. Now, descriptive grammarians get excited about that. We try to see how the word is used, how it's used differently. And then we're analysing what is going on using that word in question. Okay, to sum up, descriptive and prescriptive grammar, or descriptive and prescriptive approaches to language. Both of them have a home, and both of them are actually quite useful. Descriptive linguistics is used by linguists in order to find out how language works, and to see how people really use their language in their everyday interactions, without being too judgmental. 
prescriptive linguistics, on the other hand, looks at the rules of the language, the way in which the language is used within society and in which norms have been formed and whether or not those norms are being adhered to. And uh, in order to do well in an essay, it's probably quite a good idea to adhere to those rules. The prescriptive approach, the approach looking at norms in relation to language and to grammar, can be useful too. So we've got these two sides of the coin. Now, in linguistics, we very often take a descriptive approach. We very often try to explain why people use things and how they use things and look around at the language we have around us. And um, that sometimes takes students by surprise because it's so common that people uh, think about language in prescriptive ways and they want to use language in the right way and, you know, and speak correctly. But uh, linguists, in a way, look at both and the descriptive approach is really common and actually really good fun.